Hello there. I'm getting a bit carried away with myself now that I think I've cracked the alcohol acrylic paint backgrounds. And I was thinking overnight that uh, perhaps I'll try layering it and that's what I'm going to have an attempt at here. I've taped down some paper onto my craft sheet and I've actually taped the craft sheet down because it drives me crazy the way it scootles around everywhere. I'm just going to layer up some different colours of paint and try the dripping with alcohol over the different layers and see what sort of an effect I can get. I've got an idea in my head and I just want to see if it'll work. I'll start with a fairly pastel-y green. set up with some some white and just cover the paper fairly thickly with that plain layer mixed up enough Barely, but just. Okay. Now I've got that on there, I'm just going to let that dry. And I'll come back with the next layer. See you in a tick. Well, that green is now dry. And I'm back to do a layer of colour and the first lot of alcohol. I'm just going to try layering up the alcohol over various layers of, of different colours. See, see what happens. I've had another look at the difference between the isopropyl alcohol and the methylated spirits which I found more successful than the isopropyl and the isopropyl alcohol is 100% isopropyl alcohol and the methylated spirits is 95% ethanol. Just what that means I wouldn't have a clue but I'll think on that a little more maybe do some research and see Basically, it doesn't matter, does it? As long as you're getting the result you want. That was horribly fluoro. But I suppose for the exercise, it doesn't really matter that much. Now, I want this to be much more liquid than the previous layer. The previous layer was really a, a coating layer to seal the paper. I want this to be more liquid so that it can react with the alcohol better. That looks okay. Got a bit of yesterday's blue still in the brush, so it's colouring up quite. This time I'm going to try and do perhaps slightly thinner layers of paint not leave too many blobs on the page because I found where the blob was yesterday it didn't react as well Buckley. Whoops, now I'm spilling it everywhere. I think the alcohol reacts not so much with the paint but with the water in the paint. I 
over and give them a second drip on top of the first. And that's where I seem to find the best effect yesterday, where it peels back the layers one on top of the other. I really want some of that green showing through. So that it's visible in subsequent layers. Definitely seems to get brighter if you layer up the the alcohol. And what surprises me is that it sort of keeps working after the I think the paint would be dry. It's very warm here again today and I've got the lights on. But it's still peeling back those layers in some areas anyway. That's about it, but I have got some green showing through, which is good. Now I'll just leave this to dry and I'll be back with another layer. See you soon. Here we are. Now we've got two layers dry. We've got the green at the base <coughs> and we've got a, a pinky layer over the top. That's nice and dry. And we're about to go back in with some blue. Some phthalo blue. Mixing up, making it nice and sloppy. I'll also get out some, I think I'll use some fresh alcohol. It's been sitting there a little while, it's had time to evaporate. I really should put a small amount in a little tub with a seal but this is easy to get in and out. So here we go, let's try this layer and see what this happens with this. getting more vibrant, isn't it? Not having the paint too, the layer of paint too thick helps. almost like little flowers. Columbines or something like that. I 
think also having um, something impervious in the base seems to have a, an effect on it. Makes it more effective. I think if your base is porous, it doesn't work so well. Anyway, seem to be getting there. While it was drying, I did a little piece. I had a green one of Cat Hand's um, unwasted paint um, file cards. I've been using up some old file cards that I had in my stash, using them as she suggests us to clean up any unwasted paint. Um, for example, this leftover phthalo blue is about to go onto a couple. And this one was a series of greens and blues from another project. And because it was fairly well coated, I gave it a thin wash of gold acrylic paint and just dripped alcohol on it. And that's created quite a nice little background. I'm going to use that for something, that's for sure. Meanwhile, I'll let this dry. I intended to come back and do a silver wash over the top, so um, just to finish it off. So. There's one more final layer, so I'll come back once this is dry. It takes a little while, even though it is warm, um, because it runs into quite the alcohol, pushes it into these little clumps. And they take quite a while to dry, but once it's dry, back will come. See you soon. Well, here we are. It's finally dried for the last blue coat, and now we're going to put over it. And I've mixed up rather an amalgamation here of some because I don't have very many acrylic paints, I've mixed up some silver with some Kelly Green, some of my homemade spray, with a little bit of blue in it. And in fact, I think I'm going to put a wee bit more blue. into that mix. Heavens only knows what this will do. But it's all about playing, surely. Here we go. Try and get that fairly even. I'm going to have a lot of this left over. Seems to be working okay. Might be one I can doodle on. Seem to work okay with the with the sprays. I think I put too much there. It's I'll actually try that again without if I can get it to cover.
instead of putting big drops, I'll go in and do what Kat did and just use the end of the brush so I'm not dripping such large amounts. Perhaps rather fewer. It seems to be spreading well away now. Here we go. Interesting effects. Not sure that I like that colour combination, but the multi layering seems to really work. Here's the other one I did with the green and the gold and put blue over the top. Again, it's dialed it down a bit too much. I think I might try another layer of gold. And again, put less of the alcohol. so much of that. Actually, what I might do is use some of this green to mix it with the gold. needs a little more water. I think the looseness seem to matter what pigment you use. What seems to be important is the that it is a loose mix. I was thinking too, you could probably put the alcohol into um, one of the water pens. Might make it the dabbing a little bit more. I think I've gone too far with this one. I don't think this is. I think it's lost definition. I 
guess some colours and some mixtures will work better than others. There we go. Interesting. I'm sure I'll be able to use some of these for bits and pieces. And I'll do another video on how I've used them, I think. Um, give me a day or two to have a little play and come up with some finished products, whether they're cards or pockets for journals or tags or not sure. I guess whatever takes your fancy. Okay, well I think we've learned a few things. We've learned that fluidity and probably the transparency of the medium is important. Um, as well as having a sealed background. So whether you gesso it or paint it with acrylic paints or whatever, I think you really need a um, not a porous surface to start with. That seems to make it better. And yes, you can layer and layer and layer, um, but I think it loses definition. What I'm seeing with this one, where I had the blue was predominant, it's now green, but there's also a lot more of the gold showing. Um, so it just sort of changes all the time. And I guess it depends on the look you, you, you're aiming for. If you're clever enough to know what it is that you are looking for. Me, I'm just playing at the moment. I think if I had more acrylic paints, more colours, I would be able to plan the colours better. But at least now, I'm sort of more informed about what that might be. Anyhow, I'll get back to you once I've got some finished projects. Thanks for watching. Talk to you soon. Bye now.